Well, hello and welcome to our coverage of the ongoing general and state elections. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira and today we will talk about the state of Karnataka. So let's begin our special segment, Rajanama. The southern state of Karnataka will go to polls in two phases on April 18th and 23rd. 14 constituencies each will go to the polls. With 28 seats, Karnataka has the second highest number of Lok Sabha seats in the south after Tamil Nadu. The state will see a direct contest between the BJP and the Jantadal Secular Congress combined. In 2014, the BJP had won 17 seats, while the Congress could only win 9. The JDS won just 2 seats. As per the seat-sharing agreement between the JDS and the Congress, the former will contest on 8 seats, while the rest of the 20 seats will be contested by the latter. Nearly 5 crore voters will vote for 28 Lok Sabha seats in Karnataka in two phases. The state will see a direct contest between the BJP and the Congress-JDS combined. The coming together of the Congress and the JDS has intensified political activity in the state after May 2018 when the two parties came together to form the government. However, the coalition is facing some trouble due to the seat-sharing agreement that they have reached. The Congress has ceded eight of the 28 Lok Sabha seats in the state to JDS, including the Tumkur seat that it holds. As per the deal, JDS gets Hassan, Mandya, Bengaluru North, Udupi Chikmagalur, Vijaypura, Uttara Kannada, Shivamoga and Tumkur. The seat-sharing agreement has forced the Congress to deal with rebellion, especially in Hassan, Mandya and Tumkur. In Mandya, it will be a contest between Chief Minister Kumaraswamy's son Nikhil Kumaraswamy and Sumalata Ambarish. Sumalata is the widow of former Union Minister Ambarish and she had expected to get the seat from the Congress's account. With the seat going to the JDS, Sumalata is now contesting as an independent with the support of the BJP. In Tumkur, former Prime Minister H.D. Devagoda is fighting on a JDS ticket. Devigaura shifted from his native Hassan parliamentary constituency to Tumkur, making way for his grandson Prajwal Devanna in Hassan. This time in Tumkur, Devigaura will fight 77-year-old G.S. Basavaraju from BJP. Interestingly, Basavaraju had won the Tumkur parliamentary seat three times on a Congress ticket in 1988, 1989 and 1999. And in 2009, he won the seat on a BJP ticket. The BJP's Karnataka unit is confident it can win upward of 20 seats, while the Congress-JDS combined feels it is on a strong wicket and will score much more than the 11 seats which the two parties won in the 2014 Lok Sabha elections. The JDS had won just two seats in 2014 and is aiming to improve on its performance in terms of both seats and vote share. Well, let's now uh, go across uh, to Tina Jha, who's standing by in our data center. Thank you, Frank, and welcome to our election data center. So as Frank pointed out, among the southern states, Karnataka is the second most crucial state as it sends 28 members to the Lok Sabha. And in the last few years, political equations in the state have changed rapidly, beginning with the Lok Sabha polls in 2009. The BJP won 19 of the 28 Lok Sabha seats in Karnataka that year. Six seats went to the Congress party, while the remaining three seats were claimed by the JDS. The BJP also polled a majority of the vote share, 
with over 4.1 percent of the votes going into its kitty. However, even though the Congress won only six seats, its vote share was quite high at 37.65 percent. The JDS poll 13.57 percent of the votes that year. Just before the next Lok Sabha elections in 2014, Karnataka went to polls for its 224 assembly seats. The then incumbent BJP suffered a massive setback as it won only 40 seats in the 224 state assembly. Opposition Congress won a thumping majority, emerging victorious on 122 seats. The third party in the fray, the JDS, also won 40 seats, the same as the BJP, while the remaining 22 seats were won by independents and others. The result was a rude shock for the BJP, which had been in power in the state for five years. But months later, when the general elections were held in to, uh, 2014 in Karnataka, the people of Karnataka reposed their faith once again in the BJP. They voted largely in favour of the party, helping them win 17 of the 28 parliamentary seats in Karnataka. In terms of assembly segments, this means that the BJP led in 132 seats. This was in sharp contrast to the party's performance just a year ago in 2013. The Congress, on the other hand, won only nine seats. And as compared to their stellar performance in the state polls in 2013, the results of the 2014 general elections were nothing but a setback to the grand old party. In terms of vote share as well, the BJP made a significant jump between the 2013 assembly polls and the 2014 Lok Sabha polls. In 2013, the party won just 19.89% of the votes polled. The Congress got 36.59% and a little over 20% of the votes went to the JDS. Cut to 2014 Lok Sabha elections and the BJP's vote share had jumped to 43.37%. The Congress's vote share also increased by a few percentage points while the JDS vote share decreased slightly. In May 2018, the state of Karnataka went to the polls once again to choose its assembly. The BJP there emerged as the single largest party, winning 104 of the 224 seats, but falling just short of majority. The Congress won 80 seats and the JDS won 37. This is the year that the Congress and the JDS came together to form the government in the state. In terms of vote share, the BJP and the Congress were close polling 36.22% and 38.61% of the votes respectively. The JDS got about 18.6% of the votes then. Frank, back to you. All right, Tina Jha, thank you for joining us there with those details from the data center. Let's now uh, take the discussion uh, forward in our studio right now and talk about this crucial state of Karnataka in South India. Joining me in the studio right now to talk about uh, the elections in Karnataka, Jatin Gandhi, senior journalist, Arti Jairat, senior journalist as well, and Shekhar Ayer, senior journalist, also joining us on the program. Thank you to all of you for joining me on the program today. Uh, Shekhar Ayer, let me begin the program with you first. It's an important state, Karnataka, because there are 28 seats and probably the only southern state where the BJP and Congress are directly, uh, you know, fighting against each other for those seats there. Yeah, it's a very important state uh, and it's one of the states where BJP is hoping to rather increase the tally uh, despite Congress and JDS uh, having come together uh, first time after the assembly elections last year and this time in terms of seat sharing. Now, these elections are also important for another reason which is the future course of the JDS Congress coalition. If uh, the JDS and Congress managed to get enough number of seats or improve upon the 2014 tally, then one can be assured that this alliance will move forward. But there are a lot of indications that this alliance is facing a lot of friction. A friction that would uh, also reflect on the, the factional problems within the Congress and the dynastic issues within the JDS. So it is against this background uh, one has to look at these arrangements that have been worked out between Congress and JDS. And uh, the first time you are seeing that the Gauda family is out in the fray. Uh, the Gauda, the senior, Deva Gauda himself is, has given up his Hassan seat, which he won for last, uh, I mean for six times he has won the seat. He has given it, rather he was forced to give it up for his uh, grandson. grandson, that is uh, 
Prajwal Revanna, who is contesting from Hassan, and the other grandson, that is Kumar Swami's son, is contesting from Mandya. And Mandya is again another very interesting and uh, uh, an outcome which uh, everybody is keeping their finger crossed because of the high voltage campaign with Sumalata, who is the widow of uh, former Union Minister Ambrish. And there is a lot of talk that Siddharamaya is backing Sumalata. And Kumaraswamy has been suspicious of what the supporters of Siddharamaya are doing there because Siddharamaya was very upset that in one of the two constituencies he contested in the assembly elections, he lost from Chamundeshwari. Since then he has been blaming the Gauda clan and he is one of the leaders who have remained uneasy with this alliance between JDS and Congress. So it is against this background one will have to uh, see how these 14 seats are going to perform in the first phase. Mm. Of course, no, in terms this, of the, the seat of Tumkur also is not you know is not, yes, is not even a cakewalk Tumkur, because, because Gauda I mean it was a Congress traditional Congress seat and initially when the seat was given away to JDS there was a lot of rebellion in the Congress even the Congress sitting MP and all they even some of them openly said they will file nominations and they were persuaded not to do so for the interest of alliance and uh, because of course Tumkur has in fact if you look at in terms of um, the community combination in these places. The, the, one of the strong areas for BJP is, of course, the South Bangalore and uh, North Bangalore. People are saying that he is there, uh, the f Union Minister, the uh, Sadananda, former, Gauda. Sadananda Gauda is there. So, uh, what doesn't know what is the year, yeah, but the, usually this, particularly Udipi Chikamangalore, Dakshin Kannada, these are considered very uh, strongholds, basically, strongholds of, the, of the BJP. And yeah. Of this, uh, uh, and the rest are all combinations that suit the Congress of these. Uh, in fact, Congress is more comfortable in the 10 of those uh, 14 seats that are um, going to post on the 18th. Yeah. Yes, certainly. Let me bring in uh, Jatin Gandhi into the picture. Now, you know, is this particular election, the Lok Sabha election, going to be a referendum on how the alliance has run the government as well from 2018 to 19? Basically, this this alliance actually came into being keeping the 2019 general election in mind, you know, because uh, that was the time when uh, it was thought that a grand alliance is being staged and we had the optics of, you know, Sonia Gandhi and Mayawati hugging each other and uh, that was the time when, when this, when this, the, when this idea and this, you know, the, the talk about a grand, you know, anti-BJP, anti-Modi alliance fructifying you know that's the time when it peaked so jds and congress have traditionally been uh, you know uh, they've been rivals in the state forever in fact that is one problem that this alliance is facing is that one there are uh, rebels on both sides both in jds and in congress as uh, shekhar Ayer was saying secondly uh, the transfer of votes is something that is the most difficult uh, hurdle for this alliance because this was stitched it's it's it was an unnatural alliance stitched basically as an experiment to to eventually spin off a much grander or much larger alliance something i mean some the experiment that started with 2015 in uh, bihar but eventually it did not translate into you know that sort of a force and then again an attempt was made with with these elections so so it's 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 an unnatural alliance there are difficulties uh, how will the jds and the congress ensure that their votes are transferred there are new territories that they are probing, like Tumkur, uh, you know, was mentioned. So, uh, Ajri Devagoda has been synonymous with Hassan. Now he has to shift his, uh, you know, his seat from uh, Hassan to Tumkur. Uh, because there is the need to accommodate the third generation now of the dynasty. So, all these factors will play up. Absolutely. Arthi Jarat, you know, talking about transfer of votes, another issue really for the JDS is they have not been able to poll well when it comes to the Lok Sabha elections. Assembly elections, they do reasonably well, come up to about 20-22% of the vote share. But when it comes to the Lok Sabha elections, they hover at about 10-13%. to 13 So is that going to be a problem as far as the alliance is concerned? Well, you know, Karnataka has a very interesting history because... Uh, I mean, for the last two, three decades, I think at least, the state has voted differently in the assembly elections mm. and, and exactly the opposite in the parliamentary polls. So clearly the people of Karnataka draw a distinction between who they, which party they want for the state and which party they want at the centre. 
and that is probably one of the reasons why the JDS polls so badly in a Lok Sabha poll. Uh, because, you know, it really, I mean, I don't think the people uh, of Karnataka believe that it can form a government at the centre. It, you know, has to be just part of a coalition. So, it is going to be a problem. And, you know, actually the big problem for this alliance is that, uh, you know, the JDS's traditional stronghold is South Karnataka. And so actually is the Congress's stronghold. So, you know, they are clashing in their traditional strongholds. And, you know, normally you would think that the vote, since they both are strong in the same area, the vote should come together, you know, seamlessly and the uh, alliance should do well. But actually they have been fighting each other for so long that it's very difficult now for the leaders to tell their cadre and their supporters and their voters that no, you know, you have to vote for one or the other in the larger interest of the country or the larger national interest or whatever. So, you know, I mean, it's proving to be quite a problem. And, you know, we're seeing the kind of, uh, you know, tensions that are uh, happening there, the kind of fights that are breaking out. Also, another very interesting thing was that, uh, you know, I did travel a bit in 2018 for the um, assembly polls. And I remember people saying that, uh, you know, there was a lot of goodwill for Narendra Modi in Karnataka, you know, um, despite sort of farmers' distress and, you know, unemployment and so on. Th there was a lot of goodwill for Narendra Modi. People there felt that Narendra Modi has been a good prime minister. So I think that that, that sentiment will benefit the BJP, as will the infighting and the tensions between the JDS and the Congress. You know, that having been said, Shekhar Ayer, you know, I happened to meet several of the uh, BJP candidates in Bangalore and su in the surrounding areas. All of them were asking for votes in the name of Narendra Modi and they said, don't look at me. It is not me who's walking on the streets here in Karnataka. It is Narendra Modi. So how big a factor is Narendra, going to, Narendra Modi going to be on the 18th and the 23rd? Well, he is a big factor. He was a big factor in 2018 assembly elections also. And you saw that... Uh, Prior to Modi um, going on the campaign trail in Karnataka for the assembly elections, BJP prospects were not seen to be that bright. But after Modi's uh, two, three rounds of uh, rallies, you saw that BJP's uh, thing started soaring. And the fact that BJP crossed, got um, 101 seats in the assembly elections, that itself showed there was enough pull. And of course, there was the Edurappa factor being he's the Lingayat face of the party. And, uh, of course, subsequent to the poll, what has happened is the way Sitara Michiri played the matchmaker. He got together the JDS, Devagoda and uh, Sonia and Rahul to speak to each other. And on the larger goal of uh, preventing the BJP from uh, returning to power, rather uh, coming to power because Congress was uh, In income power. in government. Yeah. Uh, that alliance itself, you know, was a very interesting thing. But that left to a lot of, uh, not just uneasiness. It was something that was imposed by the Congress High Command on the on a regional satrap like Siddharamaya. And Siddharamaya was an ex-JDS leader who had broken away from Devagada because of the dynastic uh, pressures in JDS. And he had formed his own course. That's how he brought along his own social engineering, which is a combination of his own community and other communities as a counter to the Vokalinga community. Of course, BJP's strong base has always been among the Lingayats. Lingayats yeah. Of course, now what has happened this time is, see, on the paper, this uh, arrangement between JDS Congress looks too good, particularly mm. if it comes to southern uh, Karnataka. But the problem is, what are the stakes of different Congress leaders in the continuation of this alliance? See, that is why people are looking at this if, because if the, if the alliance were to move ahead, then this uh, combination, this understanding must result in a good number of seats for the JDS and Congress. Uh, but the whole thing is, are these, some of these leaders serious? Because it seems like Siddharamaya is on one side, who is very unhappy with this, and he has been conveying to the high command that this is an alliance that does no good in the longer run in terms of by the time we have the next assembly elections. But he was persuaded by both Rahul ji and Sonia ji, you wait till the Lok Sabha election. Let's see how this moves. And and also, the Kumaraswamy government is seen to be somewhat caught in a, a paralysis of sorts. Whether it was that uh, loan waiver, which was a big issue, they have, been, they have had difficulty. Then also the way in which the, the cabinet uh, was got expanded, then allocation of portfolios. The, you see, there are a lot of left, but of course, 
one person so solidly behind this alliance right now is dikesh shiv kumar mm. mm. he is also vakalinga leader and uh, he is acting as a counter to uh, sidaramaiah so i think lot will turn you know how it goes see there is a possibility that congress may will may win a good number of seats but at the same time the future alliance and there is a seed of suspicion in the jds ranks as to the sincerity of leaders like sudaramaiah and helping their candidates win right. even though there have been joint campaigns by sudaramaiah uh, and devagoda also which are two difficult leaders to be seen on the uh, stage together absolutely and, and and the alliance is going all out really to try and get those three seats so the jds the family seats retained there but uh, you know uh, jatin as far as uh, uh, national schemes are concerned as far as prime minister narendra modi's persona is concerned are some of these things going to matter on the ground you know national schemes central schemes will will they have an impact in in a southern state like karnataka you know statistics from the past show that uh, the uh, the assembly elections in karnataka and then uh, followed shortly by the uh, general election the results can be very different so clearly uh, as arti said that uh, people are not looking at gds as becoming a large large scale player at the national level so obviously the fight comes down to the bjp and the congress there and this is the only state where the bjp and congress are in a direct contest and in fact this is the only the only place uh, where the bjp in the south that is that the bjp has some electoral relevance i mean it it went up to 19 in 2009 which was its best performance so far but uh, out of 23 seats now to match the 2009 performance will be difficult uh, unless the bjp uh, you know plays the national card it continues to harp on as you know shekhar was saying that the local uh, the local uh, contestants there are saying don't vote for me vote for modi so the more the bjp plays up the modi card the more it plays up the achievements of the modi government uh, you know the better chances it stands of uh, getting more seats but i don't see that out of out of 23 when you have already have 17 28 out of 28 when you already have 17 uh, you know how you are going to perform uh, better than that right so you know uh, i'm going to go back to a point uh, arti that shekhar was making he he said it twice in fact you know he said once the elections are over once we we are at may 23rd we're not very sure whether the state government will continue or not absolutely your your thoughts on that no no he's completely right because uh, you know the continuation of this government which you know sort of came into being almost overnight once the results came out and only with the only aim of stopping the bjp from forming a government the continuation of this government is really up in the air look if the alliance does well and uh, you know i mean if by some chance you have some kind of a non bjp government coming in to uh, play at the center then i think the compulsion for the two parties to stay together in karnataka are very strong so it will be a compulsion then if, and yeah, nothing else yeah yeah of course because otherwise if once the state government goes and you know you never know you'll have another election and you know it could be the bjp and you know so on but if the alliance does not do well and uh, you know i mean what is it what is the reason that the two of them should stay together so we There could is possibly really no reason. we could and possibly see a repeat of yeah it's not it's not it's an not organic, organic you know it's not an organic it alliance it's a just with the idea of 19 in mind yeah. and, and keeping and the keep bjp out because bjp in several places before that in the in the state elections had continued to get lesser number of seats not ending up as the uh, as the largest single largest party however managing to form the government so Ra rahul gandhi who have, was having his first year you know first run as the president he wanted to show some aggression so they got together yeah. uh, yachuri being uh, harkishan singh so he uh, you know prodigy <laughs> he chela <laughs> he tried to do what they did in 2004 yeah. so stitched it all together so it's 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 an Uh, unnatural uh, you know inorganic alliance yeah. it it even if uh, they get good number of seats it might not still last because the the problems within the alliance will not vanish right so so arti you are suggesting that if the alliance does not do well we'll probably see something that happened in telangana you know where there was an alliance formed there between the tdp and the congress but post the election it crumbled it so crumbled. A, a similar absolutely. case could happen in karnataka no, 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 as you're absolutely, suggesting absolutely in fact i think uh you know uh one of the first state governments to go 
if uh, this alliance does not do well and the, you know the BJP returns to power, one of the first state governments to go will be the Karnataka state government because it is really you know on a razor's edge over there. Right. And, um, and you know, I mean, every day you are seeing some drama or the other, you know, Kumara Swami keeps crying, saying that he is not being allowed to function, his coalition partner is dictating terms to him. You know, I mean, there, you, you can see the visible, the tension is very visible uh, between the two partners. Absolutely. All right. Then uh, we have to talk about the northern part of the state as well, the region in the, in the state where the Lingayats dominate. But before that, we'll slip into a short break. Discussion will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. Watch In Depth with me, Tina Jha, at 6 p.m. Enter the majestic forecourt of Rashtrapati Bhavan and you'll come across the Jaipur Column. A gift to the Viceroy from Savai Madhu Singh, the Maharaja of Jaipur, to commemorate the creation of the new capital. The 145 meter high column is crowned with six pointed crystal stars on a bronze lotus and inside the stone shaft runs a steel tube which weighs a little more than five tons. The base of the column has text conceived by Lord Irwin and Sir Edwin Lutyens inscribed on it. अमित स्याही या इंडेलिबल इंक यही वो स्याही है जो वोट डालने के बाद आपकी उंगली पर लगाई जाती है उन्नीस सौ में हुए पहले आम चुनाव में यह स्याही लगाने का रिवाज नहीं था लेकिन फर्जी मतदान की खबरों के चलते चुनाव आयोग ने नेशनल फिजिकल लेबोरेटरी ऑफ इंडिया से एक स्याही बनाने को कहा उन्नीस के तीसरे आम चुनाव में पहली बार इस स्याही का इस्तेमाल किया गया अगर आपकी उंगली पर यह स्याही लगी हो तो इसका मतलब यह है कि आपने मतदान कर दिया है और अब आप दोबारा मतदान नहीं कर सकते अमित स्याही में सिल्वर नाइट्रेट खुला होता है जो इसे पक्का बनाता है इसको बनाने का फॉर्मूला गुप्त है 
अमित स्याही लगते ही सूख जाती है और कम से कम पंद्रह दिनों तक नहीं मिटती इस स्याही को भारत कई देशों में सप्लाई करता है ये स्याही बाएं हाथ की इंडेक्स फिंगर यानी तर्जनी उंगली में लगाई जाती है अगर बाया हाथ ना हो तो दाएं हाथ में और अगर किसी मतदाता के दोनों हाथ नहीं हो तो पैर के अंगूठे में इसको लगाया जाता है Welcome back you're watching India Votes 2019 on Rajya Sabha television with me Frank Rao's and Pereira let's now quickly go across to our data center where uh, Tina Jai is standing by to get us some uh, information about the Lingayat dominated seats in Karnataka Indeed Frank let me tell you that in Karnataka politics Lingayats have been a dominant factor since 1956 when the state got its present shape following reorganization of the 21 chief ministers that the state has had eight have come from the lingayat community they form about 17% of the electorate in karnataka and according to political analysts they decide the outcome in close to 120 assembly seats and as many as 12 lok sabha seats in the state now let me tell you about the seats that have a sizable number of voters from the lingayat community these include hasan chikri bagalkot bijapur Gulbarga, Bidar, Kopal, Haveri, Dharwad, Davangere, Shimoga, and Urupi Chikmangalur. Now, although the Lingayats are considered as the core vote bank of the BJP today, they once formed the backbone of the Congress Party. It was only after the unceremonious removal of Virendra Patil as the Karnataka Chief Minister by the then Congress President Rajiv Ga uh, Rajiv Gandhi in 1990. that the lingayats shifted their electoral allegiance to the bjp conventional election wisdom says that the lingayats will stand firm behind their leader bs yadurappa and his party the bjp while the vokkaligas which form another dominant force in state politics support the gauras in the present scenario the jds congress combine in the state of karnataka now will the caste combinations remain the same in deciding political fortunes this time as well is something that we'll have to wait and watch until the 23rd of may back to you frank right uh, tina ja thank you for taking us through those details shekhar ayer let's concentrate on uh, north karnataka now for the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes because 14 very crucial seats go to polls there as well on april 23rd your thoughts on north karnataka well i think this is one of the uh, areas where the bjp is very very optimistic we have seen already uh, at least a couple of rallies by the uh, prime minister modi there and they have drawn very good crowds two days ago we saw uh, he landed at the airport and was on his way to uh, the rally uh, venue in mangalore city crowds just broke away from the uh, from the cordon that had kept them away and they surrounded the car uh, often raising security questions as to how this happened and we have seen modi making a mention of this in his interview he gave mm. to doordarshan and rajya sabha yes. television yesterday where he said look i didn't expect this because i saw these crowds i just thought i'll just wave at them and they came so there is a very good traction for the party of course that area has been that entire coast goes up to batkal in the north where batkal we all know has also seen a lot of ferment where you to Uh, left to join the ISIS, and some of them were disappointed. Came back, and that region is seen as a ground for a lot of uh, Islamist uh, activity, and that has seen BJP hyping its nationalism and the Hindutva card in that region. So, therefore, that is that is one of the very uh, politically ferment and communally very sensitive region, and so BJP is hoping that all this will get converted to you know handsome. Uh, A harvest of seats. Right. Of course, you talked about other places in Lingayat Belt where the BJP is, of course, focusing on the denial of uh, yet another chance to Edrappa because having won 104 seats and he was only nine short of number. But the Congress and JDS did a um, you know perfidy, as they would say, denied him an opportunity. So that kind of sympathy factor is also working. And for for the Lingayat strongman Edrappa. he is already past 75 years and for him it has been quite a exasperating uh, period in the last 10 months since kumaraswamy took over and uh, so we have seen that in terms of 
Uh, Lingayat support. The BJP is confident that the Lingayats are totally with it. And there has been a lot of uh, uh, remorse on the part of Lingayat leaders belonging to even other parties uh, who have blamed Sidramaya for that <clears throat> efforts to provide a religious tax to Lingayat so that uh, they are treated as separate from the Hindu religion. That apparently backfired and even Sidramaya has admitted in subsequent interviews that was one of the those decisions which did not. So what we can see in the second phase is a lot of it is on the basis of the community appeal and the community support, right. whether it is Congress or whether it is um, BJP. JDS is not a big factor, excepting in uh, Udipi Chinkabangalore areas, because there also there are the sizable vocal ligas vocal there, so. there. And even the BJP candidate is our Shobha Karan Laji, mm. uh, who is seen as a, one of the very strong leaders, and she's a vocal liga who is close to Edurappa. Yes, and uh, so that's that's one of those seats which is there. But if you go further up, whether it is Dakshina Kannada or whether it is even up to Karwar, I think those are all regions where uh, BJP looks quite confident. Absolutely. And talking about uh, B.S. Yedi Rappa, former Chief Minister of the State, Chatan, how big a factor is he going to be in the Lok Sabha elections? You see, if if, if you, uh, the the spread of the BJP in, in Karnataka can uh, largely be attributed to B.S. Yedi Rappa. However, this time, and uh, you know, as Shekhar sir was saying that uh, he he missed becoming the chief minister again just last year by a few seats because the because the JDS and the Congress decided to come together and keep him out of power or the BJP out of power. So there is you know in the in the northern Karnataka regions you know where is he's a where that which are his stronghold. There is this uh, surge for him. However, uh, of late. These, uh, you know, allegations of corruption against him, you know, the BS, the so-called BSY diaries and then the, uh, you know, outside of uh, Karnataka, uh, it's, you know, Prime Minister Modi has often harped on co corruption in the, you know, in the opposition camps. It is only here in Karnataka that, you know, corruption is an issue which, you know, in which the BJP is the, uh, is the primary target. That's why we see that every now and then, every, every day, uh, you know, even at the national level, uh, repeatedly, the Congress and the other opposition parties are raising the BSY diaries. Then, the, not all is well between him and you know his his former deputy uh, Ishwarappa. So, all these factors, because ultimately it's the it's the cadres you know which which go down to get people to vote and you know bring them out to the polling booths. So, how much of that will affect the election for him? You know, is a question that we we will get an answer to in the next uh, ten to twelve days. Absolutely. We'll talk about issues in just a bit. But before that, you know, talking about the Lingayats, uh, like elsewhere in the country, Arti Jairat, is caste going to be a big factor in Karnataka as well? Because Lingayats constitute about 17% of the electorate, the Vokaligas constitute about 16% of the electorate, and the fight seems to be between these two communities in the state. But they have very uh, sort of clear areas where they dominate. Dominate, So, yeah. you know, it's actually not a clash between the castes. It's really the caste consolidating in their area and winning for, you know, uh, their candidate or their party. Uh, so the Lingayat thing has been quite interesting because, you know, they traditionally were very, very uh, sort of strong, uh, a strong base for the Congress. And it was really with the exit of Virinder Patil that I think, uh, you know, the Congress lost that vote. But uh, recently, I mean, there was this sort of slight, uh, despite the Siddharamaya's uh, very ill-advised card of, uh, you know, trying to play politics with the Lingayats by trying to declare them as a sort of separate religion outside of uh, Hindus. Despite that, you know, I mean, the fact that the Congress managed to win Bellari, you know, reclaim Bellari, was something which was quite unusual and quite unexpected. Um, the thing with Yadurapa is that, of course, he is the man who built the BJP in, uh, you know, Karnataka. And, uh, you know, because he's a Lingayat, I mean, he really helped to consolidate that base for the BJP. But unfortunately, his uh, tenure as chief minister was marked by a lot of controversy. And, uh, you know, and then there was all these uh, uh, allegations of corruption and so on. And then he had to quit and then he was kept out and he was not allowed back in. And it was only when Narendra Modi uh, became, uh, you know, sort of started rising in the central leadership of the BJP and made his pitch to be the prime minister that Yadurapa was brought back into the, you know, fold and given a prominent place. But I think that, you know, all that controversy and things has taken its toll 
of Yedurappa as the most prominent uh, face of the BJP in Karnataka and the most prominent Lingayat leader. Um, so, you know, I frankly think that, uh, you know, it, the Karnataka elections will be more about Narendra Modi than about Yedurappa. Uh, you know, or any state leader, uh, uh, you know, and especially in this northern Karnataka belt that we're talking about. I think, uh, you know, M Modi is still a huge draw, not, may not maybe in the south, but uh, in the northern parts, yes, he is still very much a huge draw. Right. You know, talking about the northern belt, Shekhar Iyer, farm distress has been a problem in that particular belt. You know, there have been several farmer suicides as well. Are all these issues going to, you know, have some kind of a resonance on the ground in the state? They will, but we will have to remember it was the Siddharamaya government that was there, you know, which mm. was earlier. So the farm distress is an issue which BJP uses against the Congress government. And also this loan waiver issue, because the loan waiver was made a big thing. But uh, Kumaraswamy has had problems because uh, they do not have so much of money because one stroke right off would have meant something like 50,000 crores, which the state government doesn't have. So therefore, it has been happening in parts. And uh, that has led to a lot of tension. And the, the Kumaraswamy's complaint is the Congress is not enabling him to completely get move forward on this because the credit would go to Kumaraswamy. These are the things, rumblings we have been hearing. So farm distress is an issue and Karnataka's farmers have been, you know, particularly in the north, they have been constantly facing the problem of drought. So, the water is a serious issue, whether it is, you know, Hubli Darwad or even um, Belgavi or Belgov areas. It's water is a you know, perennial issue. And uh, there, is, there has been, you know, and of course, incidentally, Karnataka has a river dispute, rather has had a river dispute both with Tamil Nadu, with Maharashtra when it comes to Krishna. Uh, and Andhra Pradesh. So, it is one state which and is... Goa as well. Goa as well, you know, sharing of Netravati and... So Mandovi. Th Mandovi also. It. Yes. So, th there are a lot of these uh, water issues, a problem and uh, uh, in fact, there have been a lot of suggestions about, you know, way to look at uh, how can farmers can, you know, whether they should go in for a different type of cropping. I mean, these have been debated, but the big thing is um, they need relief and relief for farmers is a big issue. And Prime Minister Modi is actually talking about his Kisan Nidhi scheme, saying that the Karnataka is not openly embraced by scheme. Therefore, you know, the farmers are being denied. A point that he is making in, um, he did it in uh, Bengal also, where Mamata said no to both Kisan Nidhi as well as the health insurance scheme, Aishman, Aishman Bharat. Bharat. So, these are talking points there and each side is trying to tell the electorate, look, uh, we are the best bet for you. Absolutely. And talking about, you know, this water related issues, Arti, I'd like to come to you on, you know, the issue in South Karnataka, that of the Kaveri River water, water dispute between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. It's an issue that has made national oh headlines my, yes. on several occasions. Oh, oh it's so uh, emotive. It, it's it extremely so emotive. Yes, yes, it's a very emotive issue. Yes. And the JDS seems to be bringing that up every time, you know, and ev everywhere that uh, Devagada goes, he talks about what he has done for that particular issue and what needs to still be done, really. So, do you think that's going to be a factor? So, you know, I mean, it really uh, creates a dilemma um, for the alliance because, uh, you know, on the one hand, the Congress is in alliance with the DMK in Tamil Nadu and they're trying to make a comeback over there. And on the other hand, the Congress is in alliance with the JDS in Karnataka and they're trying to win seats. So, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, I mean, it becomes, uh, you know, I mean, obviously the Congress would have to talk one language in Tamil Nadu and another language in because Karnataka. Because it's an equally and, uh, emotive issue, issue in Tamil, in Tamil, Tamil Nadu, Nadu as well. Absolutely. I mean, the kind of riots we have seen in both states over, you know, water sharing of the Kaveri is, uh, and, and it's really, uh, you know, I mean, the Supreme Court has come out with decisions, but the decisions have not been implemented. It's, uh, you know, it's really strange that, uh, you know, bo because I guess it's such an emotive issue. So, you know, nobody has, uh, you know, kind of really been played fair and square no, on and, the and sharing the, of the water. And the fact waters. of the matter is, there is no water. If you go to the reservoirs, you know, they're all depleted. So, it's it's a precious resource and yeah. everyone, each yeah. is trying to safeguard yeah. their own interests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Karnataka has this big problem of drought. There's no question about it. Absolutely. And Jatin, uh, what are the other issues do you think 
that are going to dominate the discourse or that are dominating the discourse in I think rural distress agrarian distress is is a nationwide issue I mean it's not confined to Karnataka however Karnataka is being a largely agrarian state it's it's going to be one of the most prominent issues uh, you know uh, you know you know uh, Arthi mentioned that the Congress has a problem at hand that uh, uh, you know, it has to speak one language in Karnataka, another language in Tamil Nadu, but which is true for even the BJP as it expands, it will realize that it will have to mean different things to different people in different parts of the country. Uh, Congress was in power both in Haryana and Punjab and the SYL issue, you know, it went on forever and ever. And, you know, even the even the uh, the agreement on the basis of which SYL, you know, this Bia Satluj water was the Ravi Bias surplus water was decided, you know, divided, and the SYL, uh, you know, became an issue. Even that was that happened because Congress, uh, you know, because Indira Gandhi as as Prime Minister got three different Congress chief ministers to sit to a table, and agree to something that otherwise the states were not agreed to. But but the moment they went back to their states, they started fighting. So similar. Uh, so one one of the issues that is going to be is that what are you, uh, you know. When, you know, when, when regional interests are concerned, uh, what are you promising in the other state? That's very important. So that is going to be an issue too. Right. So, uh, Shekhar Ayer, since we are here, what is it? Is there going to be a single factor that is going to decide the election either this way or that way? Well, I think uh, there is no single factor. There is a host of factors, but there are some factors which are uh, dominating. And of course, one is the the future of the alliance and whether the alliance is able to deliver, that is one. Of course, on the other hand is that should Modi be given another chance? You know, that is also a big issue. And since Karnataka, particularly even in Bangalore, the South Bangalore is one of the strong areas for the BJP. Anand Kumar, you know, won six times there. And this time BJP boldly decided to bring a new face because BJP is also looking at, you know, life after Edurappa in the sense you know, they have been in all these effort has been to bring new, new faces, new, new people who will power that Modi's campaign. So but that decision has not gone well. No, but gone it did not well go state, well. State but unit. subsequent to that, because there is a problem in BJP as far as Karnataka is concerned, there has been a double, I mean, uh, uh, a struggle or uh, you can say a problem between two leaders. One is Edurappa himself, and the other is BL Santosh, who is actually the RSS person who was taken away from Karnataka and put in the central party. But it is always a supremacy between these two leaders. And incidentally, Bangalore South, they the central party chose somebody who was not the choice of these two. That is how Surya, you know, became the BJP candidate. I think there is another issue which is, which is the most talked about in the election is this income tax rates. Mm. Because it started with DK Shiv Kumar, a lot of money was found. And it is during those raids, Shike, uh, DK Shiv Kumar produced a diary of Yadrappa. And after that, uh, you know, the income tax went to Yadrappa and said, this is the diary which, you know, Shiv Kumar gave, you know, when we raided his house. And of course, Yadrappa's defense was, look, I don't maintain diaries and this is not my handwriting. So that is one. And subsequent to that, we saw business, also, I mean, business leaders are raided for tax evasion. And you have the Kumaraswami coming up and owning them as my friends. Why are you raiding my friends? This is a very unusual thing. We are seeing it. I mean, this I didn't see in other states. Of course, Kamal Nath had to come in defense of his aides when they were raided. But in Karnataka, it was a bizarre scene of Kumaraswami out, you know, to say, you have raided my friends. As if, you know, that uh, their being his friends gave immunity from uh, income tax asking questions. Of course, the other charge is that these raids are to prevent the money power being used by Congress, JDS combined. Whereas the, the, the arguments by the Congress leaders, there's nothing is happening to BJP leaders. Right. So this is, this, is a, this is another masala element of Karnataka elections this but time. But the Balayari brothers also in, you know, enjoyed similar patronage from the uh, BJP. But not, you know, no. what happened was Bellari brothers were kept out. That's why they lost Bellari. Hmm. See, the fact that the Bellari brothers were... No, what I'm trying to say is that this, this linkage between big money and you know politics has always been there in Karnataka. No, it has been there in Karnataka, yeah. but this time what is happening is unusual scene where it, you see it's not so much the party or the candidates who are being targeted. And in Karnataka, the complaint was that you know projects were given in advance, some old projects <laughs> were revived, and in a hurry. Right, right, right. To so, beat the model code. Right. So, Arthi Jarat, how big an issue is corruption going to be in Karnataka? 
You know, Karnataka is one state in which big money is a big factor in yeah, it's all a elections. State. And it's an open, it's an open thing. And uh, in fact, if you remember, uh, during the assembly elections, I think one or two polls were suspended for some time mm. because you know there was all these, there were all these allegations. And in fact, in all the South Indian states, you know, whether it is uh, Andhra or it is Tamil Nadu, in fact, I think they're planning, there's some debate going on now in the EC whether they should suspend, uh, you know, polling in one of the Tamil Nadu constituencies because of the, you know, kind of cash that has been recovered during raids. So, you know, money is such a big issue. I, I, it's such a big factor in polls in Karnataka that, frankly, I don't think people are too bothered about corruption. I mean, really, I, I don't think it's an issue in India. In fact, I find all over the country, you know, this thing comes in cycles. You know, mm. suddenly you find that corruption becomes an issue. So in 1989, you know, Bofors and the Bofors scandal was a big issue. And, you know, Rajiv Gandhi lost those elections and then it disappeared. And then in 2014, you know, corruption became a big issue because of the scams, uh, you know, associated with the UPA government. But then after that, it seems to have died down. So it's a cyclical thing. I don't think corruption remains a steady issue in Indian elections. You know, people have somehow got immune to, Just to the whole BS thing. Just today, BSY's uh, baggage was also checked, you know, by EC officials. So big money is really, I mean, is, when it's, you talk about money, it's really big money yeah. in Karnataka. Yeah, it's big money because yeah. it's a lucrative state as well, like the IT hub, really, That's Silicon both, City, yes. Bangalore is right yes. there. So yeah. that it, yes. so money is not a problem really as far as Karnataka is concerned. But Jatin, uh, apart from, you know, corruption and all these other, other issues that you've discussed, a final closing comment from you on what to look out for as far as the elections in Karnataka are concerned. I think the fate of the uh, uh, Devagoda dynasty is something that we should look out for because both his grandsons are in the fray. How they fare in this election, you know, uh, whether people are going to vote out dynasty or whether whether they are going to consolidate themselves as a family, you know, as the first family of Karnataka is something to look out for. Right. Shekhar Iyer, close the show for us with the concluding remarks. Well, I think uh, the big question there will be, will Karnataka help BJP with a good crop of seats for them to make up for the losses that they expect in northern parts of the country. Is that going to happen, do you think? Well, I think that is what they are hoping for, that a uh, little more than what they got last time, because I hear figures like you know, 20 plus mm, mm, out of the mm. 28 this time. But, I think uh, it was Yadurappa who boasted yeah, that he said, win 22 seats. No, apart from Yadurappa's <laughs> boast, they, after subsequent to Modi's rallies there, there, there is a, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, hope and confidence whether it will finally happen or not but because all... for the gaps that they are seeing in the north say whether it's up or other places where congress won this time madhya pradesh rajasthan or chhattisgarh is karnataka is the only hope from the south, south where where they can get you know good number of seats right so they, already all right. have the largest share they have the lion's share there already so yeah. sure so we'll we'll difficult. just have to wait and see of course voting will take place in 14 seats in the second phase on the 18th of april in southern karnataka and the other 14 seats in the third phase on the 23rd of april all right with that it's a wrap on this edition of india votes 2019 i'd like to thank all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us that's it for me see you again next time